Well, hello, friends, and welcome to the Monday Show 50. I'm your host, Wes. With me, as always, my good friend, Roots. Roots, I'm starting to feel like an old pro at this, man. 50 weeks I know, of the that, Monday Show. That's 50 of the Monday Show, and the Monday Show didn't start till we were already successfully going with the show. So, yeah, that's good. That's real good. Yeah, uh, we're coming to the end of fiscal year 2020 when it comes to the virtual strangers program and i i gotta say the state of vr and the state of virtual strangers is strong yeah and you know what else is strong the the state of uh, jim hall's power is strong it came on five minutes before the show started what a perfect time to come on right absolutely i mean it was only seven uh, days you know no power no big deal uh recycled says that my my mic's low what's it what's my bar look like it looks good right yeah your bar looks real good yeah anybody else uh if anybody else thinks that my mic's low uh or, or maybe he's talking about my camera here let's uh yeah, let me uh let me i just moved it up a bit i did actually now that he's saying that um i'm glad you said something uh when i was watching back the last video it did seem like your audio was a little bit lower than mine and uh so this is probably going to even it out you want to do a real quick check there for uh, recycled our audio engineer recycled this is the new uh setting let us know how it is yeah it looks like you're right up there on the edge so i think it's better i think i i don't even need to know i know that's that's better hey what's going that's on radio run <laughs> that's as good as it's gonna get anyway right yeah that's right <laughs> anyway guys monday show 50 uh, a much anticipated monday show i gotta imagine a monday show weeks even months in the making rooms so we finally did it we finally broke the seal on board packs and uh dove in head first i know and you know what's so funny is that so many misconceived notions about vorpex um good and bad uh you know like uh the first game we're going to talk about i you know i i just didn't i felt like i had already tried all these different games and none of them worked very well and then i got into the, the first game we were Talk, we're talking about and i was blown away dude like i could not believe how cool it was even when i was playing it again today i was saying wow this is so cool like um i don't do that for very many games wes yeah you know with more packs it's it's a funny thing because people people i mean it's it's an expensive thing right it's 40 bucks it's not a game so you're asking people to pay 40 bucks for a promise and what's the promise well the promise is is that you can play your flat games, all your favorites or most of them anyway, in VR. And uh, you know, it, whenever people start talking about Vorpex, the, the the conversation always goes the same way. Uh, are you impressed with it or are you disappointed? And I, I gotta say that I think when it comes to Vorpex, it really goes the same way as pretty much everything else in VR. And that is, it all depends upon what your expectations are if you're expecting you know native vr support like a real true to life vr game for all the flat games in your library you're probably going to be disappointed mm -hmm. going in but if, if you're uh expecting to expand your library a little bit by being able to play some of the best games in the world with uh 3d true you know stereoscopic 3d well, then you might just be impressed. And uh, really, it depends upon your expectations, and it depends on what game you're playing. Yeah, and your hardware, and whether you've got everything, any conflicts. I found out, and like, even just using the two different uh, versions of Helix Vision and Vorpex, like I was trying to go into Resident Evil 7, and um, it, was, it was giving me some error, and it was because I had got, tried to go in with Helix Vision, and it put that DLL in there and that was causing a problem. So there's, you can cause issues by not knowing what you're doing like Roots was doing. Um, but let's, uh, let's, let me pull up some video here just cause I want to see something different on my screen um, for the first <laughs> right. game we're talking about. And um, this is one of the ones you were talking about that uh, is going to be more 3D on a cinema screen, or at least that's the way I played it. I just went and picked whatever the most recommended, uh, file was and and put that on there and and then did what you said you said to suggest and put in uh the 3d up to 1.25 and oh, i just could not believe how cool this was dude like 
I didn't need to look around in full um, VR. It just, the, the window was so 3D and so visual. And this game alone, even outside of this damn Vorpex thing was so cool. Uh, I never knew it existed. And I guess this has been a, a journey many people have been on for four years. And uh, Roots got to go on it um, for the first time this week. And I, I was blown away. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, it, it, you said it in the chat there. PD is becoming the Vorpex King. And, you know, uh, I have him to thank, of course, for, for giving me my copy of Vorpex. But uh, it was on his recommendation that I started with Journey. And for those of you who don't know, Journey is kind of this... I mean, uh, technically, it's a platformer, but uh, I mean, it's it's almost a walking sim. And as you know, for for any walking sim to be good, it's got to show you something, and it really shows you a lot. Uh, it, it of course was launched many years ago as a uh, PlayStation exclusive. It's now available on many platforms, including uh, multiple PC platforms, but. Um, Journey is a good name for it. It's a beautiful journey. And, uh, you know, I'm always impressed when a, a game developer can convey a message, can tell a story without using any kind of spoken language. I mean, there are no words, uh, not, this, not the first word in this entire journey here, but it very much tells a, a, a story and uh, does a really good job of it. And it kind of reminded me of... Um... What is that other game now that we've been playing a little bit of that uh, is on in VR that you're running around with the masks and stuff and you got the multiple characters under the, I can't think of the name off the top of my something. Anyway, it reminds me of that game. I'm sure it'll come to me in a second, but uh, you know, it's funny. I'm looking at the chat and, and Scion VR says one of the best games ever made. And then MAME fans next comment is I didn't like it, which is very sur sur not surprising because you know, if anybody's going to not like it, main fan, it's probably you because it's, it just, there doesn't seem to be a point to it except for the journey. And, uh, but right. I, man, that journey, I don't know if you tried it, if you played it in Vorpex or not, main fan, because I did. I thought, um, and I think you even said this to me, Wes, I felt sorry for everybody that's played this game flat. It was so fucking cool in that Vorpex, man. I, I just, I keep, I, I want to go back in and finish it. I haven't even finished it. And um, it was just super cool. And just the soup, the 3D popped so good. And um, and I really felt like I was in there, you know? Yeah, and it's funny that, that main fans here saying this right now because uh, I, I swear, I, I thought of him when I was playing it. And I thought, this is just the type of game that main fan wouldn't get. Mm. Because this is very much a, uh, a stop and smell of roses, take it in sort of experience for somebody like main fan he's all about getting to the goal you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh it's, it's, it's all about for, for him the type of games he likes are the type of games that put some sort of challenge between you and the end of the game and that's not what this is anybody can play this game and beat it it's all about uh, again it's all about the journey it's just about the experience of making your way through it and i, I absolutely uh wholeheartedly believe exactly what you just said uh i can't imagine playing this on a flat screen now now having experienced it in full-on 3d uh it seems like it was made to be played that way doesn't it yeah yeah it was just a, it was super cool and um just everything about it the flying the 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 scarf you know your scarf keeps getting longer then you can fly a little bit longer and then the, you have those other flying things that come out that are like kind of I don't know they kind of like creatures in a sense or whatever but they fly around with you and you follow them and and they allow you to keep flying along with them and then you're unlocking other things and each one of these ribbons as you like it's stiff but you you go up it and it becomes um alive and then it it goes down and it unlocks something and and it's it's just it's just really cool and uh like I said if I had played it like Mame fan did on a PS3 back in the day I probably wouldn't have been that impressed with it either. It was pretty cool, but but being in the VR and um, it was just a different experience. And like you said, I really feel like it almost feels like it was made to be played that way, which is very bizarre. Um, and it's a testament to Vorpex in and of itself. So, 
Yeah, man, it's it's very artistic, very beautiful, both from a visual and audio uh, sense. I mean, the the music is just beautiful. It really is. You, you've heard us talk about certain games as if they were, you know, artwork, and this is a very good example of that. Not only, um, you know, art to the senses, but the story itself is a it's a story about uh, spirituality. It's a story about um, discovery. It's about a spiritual journey into enlightenment, honestly. That was my interpretation of it anyway. Um, but yeah, and you know, it, it's funny because I, I really didn't, uh, as much as I enjoyed playing through it, I didn't really appreciate it as much as I do now uh, until I finished the game and I started to think about it and learn some things about it. Um, first of all, as I was playing through the game, there are certain points during the game that you encounter uh, NPCs, and um, th the NPCs can can help you, and you can help them. They're, they look just like you, honestly, and uh, you know th they help you along your journey, and you help them by uh, by recharging their scarf. And your scarf is pretty much your flight meter. You can fly for a limited amount of time in this game, uh, but there's a meter that runs out and then you sink. Uh, but when you encounter these NPCs, they recharge it for you and you do the same for them. And uh, as the game goes on and, and you encounter more and more of these, uh, you'll notice that their behavior is very different. And there were cer certain parts in the game where I got a little frustrated, to be honest, because the the NPCs were going on to uh, pretty much complete the levels for me, making it so I didn't have to really do much. And I was just thinking to myself, man, th this AI needs to slow down and let me play the game <laughs> and follow me. And uh, it comes to find out, Roots, after the game, after I completed the entire game, uh, I learned that these aren't NPCs at all, but these are actually other players in there going on their journeys as well. And uh, this is actually a co-op multiplayer game uh, that doesn't have any kind of uh, communication set up. So uh, a really interesting idea uh, that I, I haven't seen in very many games. And the one you were talking about earlier, The Under Presents, uh, is actually a very uh, good example because it exhibits many of the same type of uh multiplayer aspects yeah the under presents you know it, it just everything about this game was just cool and i didn't know i don't know that i ran into any players yet other players yet so far for me it's been a, a complete solo journey um i wonder if you went offline if it would be different if you could well keep... you can't you can go offline uh, and sometimes the the other characters are non-playable characters that there actually are ai mm. the way that you tell the difference is there'll be like this glow to the uh to the ones that are actual people and uh you'll see like this orb in the periphery that shows you where your partner is you actually literally link up and connect with them uh and you can disconnect as well but um you'll know it when when you actually run across one of these people and apparently this journey is it meant to be experienced just a single time? It's meant to be ran through multiple times. Uh, there are many things hidden in the levels uh, that, that you're meant to uh, find, things you're meant to accomplish. And uh, each time that you go through it, uh, your cloak actually changes. So hmm. the veterans that have been in the game, they know if you're a noob or exactly how many times uh, roundabout that you've played through it based on what you're wearing. And uh, yeah, Roots, I mean, I went through the game and I thought I had found and, and did most of it, but out of the 14 achievements, I think I only got like one or two. So apparently there's a, there's a lot of game left here uh, to play. Well, damn it, man. I, you know, I don't want people knowing I'm a noob, Wes. Now I'm afraid to go back in there. You can't be looking at me like that. That's rude. Uh, but now I, um, I, I'll tell you what, dude, I came home, I had like an hour earlier in, in the day and I went back in there and, um, I don't know, I, there's, there a save at so what point does it save? Cause I had to restart, but, um, I was like, man, I don't want to, I wanted to keep, I literally was a little bummed out that I had to stop cause it was, 
just so cool and the way that that sand looks and and when you're going when you're looking especially when you're going up those uh ramps or whatever it felt like you were being pulled right and um you i literally felt like i was in the screen like i that's the the best way i've i are the best i've felt in a flat game that wasn't vr that was on a screen it just legit felt like i was looking into the into the game and and in that world and it was cool yeah, uh, as far as the game saves, I'm not sure exactly how it works. Uh, I don't know how far that you have made it. Have you made it to any of the... Um, I looked at them as uh, as a god, like like a deity. Like, like you'll come to these statues and you'll kneel before it and then this being will appear mm. and tell you a little bit of the story. Uh, did you make it to any of those? I, I think I can made it to one. So that that's where I always would take a break at because that those are pretty much the level dividers. At the end of each level, you'll encounter this being, and it'll tell you a little bit more of the story, mm. uh, visually, of course, not not with words. And um, you know, I, I I played through the game in three settings, but every time that I quit, I quit right after I I uh, went through one of those cinema sequences. And it always let me pick up right where I left off when I came back to it. Okay, is this what you're talking about here? Absolutely. This okay. is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I went through one of these guys. So, yeah, you uh, you, you kneel before that statue, and then you have a vision, right? And uh, obviously, this is some kind of godlike being. And uh, you're on a pilgrimage of enlightenment in whatever kind of spiritual thing they've got going on here. You're, you're trying to make your way to that mountain. That's mm -hmm. what the journey is. You're trying to make it your way to the top of that mountain. Uh, man, I don't want to give away too much of it. I, I really do uh, recommend that people play this game. Uh, now, I, obviously, if you don't have Vorpex, it's kind of hard for me to sit here and recommend that somebody go play this flat. But if you do, uh, 100%, I mean, you should go play it right now. That's 15 bucks, right? I saw $15 on Steam, 15 on on uh, Epic Game Store. So that's not too bad. Right, and I, I'm not mistaken this game has been free I, epic may have even given it away i know sony gave it away on uh, ps plus and uh if not if you don't already have this in your library um i'm sure i mean it's been around for many many years you could probably catch a, a pretty good deal on some of these key brokers no no uh, if, if you have vorpex definitely this is I, am a no-brainer to me i definitely think you should add it to your your library and try it um or at least try it on steam and if you don't like it return it but uh it's definitely one of the best games i've played um in vr that were flat you know so yeah yeah it's a a perfect length it's an easy game anyone can play uh and and make your way through it there's it's a it's a big world uh some of the um areas are not the easiest to get to you have to put a little thought into how you're going to get up there um, uh, but, but it, at no point, uh, was I bored or, uh, not engaged when I was, uh, playing this. So, uh, yeah, a hundred percent agree. Uh, everyone should be giving this one a look. Uh, Sion made a good point too, is the, um, the music is something that was credited, uh, credited for this as well. Right. Like it's got like, um, orchestra. I don't know, man. It's just such a good soundtrack as well as you're going through these worlds. It's just really cool. <laughs> Sion says music is great and I should play through again, but take my time. Um, one, yeah, I agree. The music is, it's wonderful. And, uh, I mean, I think it took me twice as long to play through this as it did PD. So I did kind of take my time. It took me over, well, it took me around three hours to play through it. And I think PD has a full playthrough on his channel. That's like 90 minutes or something like that. So and uh, I, I didn't exactly rush. Phil Yarn just blew my mind. He said people are working on Disney World rides in uh, Dreams. Now I got to get a Dreams. Yeah, and actually they're 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 apparently they're pretty good. Uh, they did an article I think on Upload about them. Uh, there was an Indiana Jones uh, ride that they remade, and uh, I, I saw on Twitter that there's some other ones that they're working on as well. I actually saw on uh, Twitter today that uh, what was it? Uh, now I can't remember. Some uh, developer of a fairly well-received 
game was going into dreams to to make a new level for that game in dreams Dance. i can't remember exactly what it is but yeah now's the time to get in on dreams it's only going to get better yeah dude i um the space mountain one was not good main fan says um or was is that the real space mountain main fan i don't know dude i uh you know i love disney i love the disney rides i just don't necessarily want to go to disney so if i could do it in vr and not have to uh, be there that'd be awesome Okay, here we go. Uh, Josh Leman, a designer at Insomniac Games, has been creating a Ratchet and Clank game oh. in Dreams VR with the help of community-made assets. Uh, so th apparently tomorrow, the 11th of August, this guy's going to be chatting on the Media Molecule channel. And uh, yeah, a, a Ratchet and Clank game in Dreams. And if it's in Dreams... More than likely, we're going to be able to play it in VR. Wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. So, yeah, again, Dreams is just, uh, I mean, it's not there yet. It's only had VR support for a couple of weeks. But anyone with any kind of uh, foresight can see what it's going to become. Uh, it, it really is uh, 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 an interesting and new thing to the, uh, the video game landscape. Yeah, that's crazy. Anyway, uh, Journey, a great first experience uh, for Vorpex. And, and I know you've been in it b before, but I'm kind of treating this as if it's uh, your first real go at Vorpex as well, uh, because it's been a while and you never really had much success with it. But, uh, you know, this was the game that I picked to, to go into first. What was the, the game that you picked to go in uh, kind of toward the beginning of this stint in vorpex okay uh well no you're not wrong i um i do consider myself this is my my first hurrah in the vorpex because everything that i tried before for the most part didn't work right or was janky i never had success with anything so um you know it was it was just me refocusing and then looking at pd's videos a little bit more and, and figuring out what i was doing wrong and uh and then trying it so um i actually i think alex had suggested this a long time ago and i like this game so much i bought it and was playing it flat and i thought damn i need to check this out on on vorpex so we i suggested to you to try it as well um and it's uh i'm sure you guys have heard it my friend pedro and uh the first time i saw this game i was it's a banana and i'm like what the hell is this thing um but the game mechanics are so cool and the reason why I suggested you check it out is because this thing like was right in your face, man. And it was so the the 3D looked so cool and um the gameplay is fun. And uh, I just thought it'd be a, a fun game for you to check out. Um oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I really didn't know what to think uh coming in to to play my friend Pedro. Uh I knew that people liked the game. Okay. I knew it was a shooter game with some uh you know, almost comedic violence in it. You know, it was a uh, kind of cartoonish violence and I knew they had a banana guy. So I, ex I expected it to be a kind of cartoony, uh, even if bloody game, uh, I really didn't expect what I got here with this game, which is, it's a, it's got a very urban feel to it. And, uh, I mean, this is a, an old school classic side scrolling, running gun game and uh man i was really kind of blown away with it not only with the the way that you know just how 3d it is but just the overall production value of this game the 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 levels are very detailed and um the music the, the music is on point start to finish in this thing i mean it really is uh, a fun time in a a good uh high-paced you know, violent shoot 'em up that that uh, really plays right down my alley. Yeah, I don't know how far you got, but it gets crazy to where you're like riding on stuff. You can like kick people's head, you know, de head kick or shoot their heads off and kick their heads at them at other enemies. And um, it's kind of got a puzzle element as well, like to where you got to figure out, you know, how to get to different areas. And and uh, but I don't know, I just. I thought this was another game and it was another instance that side scrollers work really well in VR and um, this one really popped. And then, uh, like I said, the, the gameplay was just 
um i really enjoy it it's one sometimes uh, a game i'll stream or um or did back in the day just to see if i can get you know crazy far on it so yeah man i couldn't i mean it on numerous occasions it surprised me uh the 3d depth in this uh i mean you, you see how the maps are set up here on, on this footage uh, there was more than one occasion, especially toward the beginning of the game, when I didn't really uh, understand it completely, how the game was going to work. There was uh, more than one occasion that I pressed up to try to walk into the map, right? In a door, into one of these uh, back spaces that it looks like you can walk right into. And when you consider the fact that this is actually a flat game, uh, that those spaces are just pretty much background art, uh, it really is a great job that the uh, Vorpex driver did into this one, just making that look like it's playable area. Yeah, this game was, um, when I was playing this, I don't know if you've ever played Dead Cells or not, but um, that's another game that I wish, I, I haven't gotten a, I found a, a file for it, but that game I think would be super cool to play um, in VR as well. It's just, uh, it's procedurally generated and it's got, it's just got it's crazy it's it's fun so. yeah you know the good thing about uh, another one of the good things about vorpex is the support uh, a lot of updates already three updates this year uh to vorpex and um if a game isn't supported today that doesn't mean that it's not going to be for example uh it was just last week i was having a conversation with PD, or I'm not really much of a conversation, but a, a little back and forth on Twitter um, about Death Stranding. You know, Death Stranding just got released on PC not long ago, as did Horizon Zero Dawn. They both run on the Decima engine from Guerrilla Games, and they didn't work in Vorpex at all last week. It wouldn't even attach to them. Well, uh, as of two days ago, there's a new update to Vorpex and now Vorpex works with the Decima engine and now you can play Death Stranding in VR you can well when I say in VR of course I'm talking about immersive screen mode not not full VR but the 3D screen which I mean to me in most cases is good enough honestly and then uh, you can also play Horizon Zero Dawn as well uh, so just two examples there of uh, you know updates that uh you know games that weren't supported before that are now and i got to imagine that this list is just going to keep growing yeah like steven sales says in the uh, chat ralph is amazing um not only him but the community in general because there's people are constantly looking gorilla is one of the people that are constantly tweaking files or um creating stuff um so it's just like you said what doesn't isn't there today um can be tomorrow so yeah i hesitate to say this but i was uh, i was reading through the patch notes today uh reading up on what games were were now supported what fixes uh were added in and uh one of the titles that i happened to notice uh was world of warcraft roots apparently mm -hmm. warcraft was broken before uh, but now it's working, and uh, I hesitate to say that because I know you've dedicated many uh, hours, if not years, of your life uh, to Warcraft. Yeah, and you know what? I tried, um, and I might try it again. I I tried it a while ago um, in Vorpex, and uh, the only problem is is I want to use a controller, but I'd ha I would have to use keyboard mouse. So if I could get used to that. Um, I think it'd be pretty cool, even just leveling, running around the worlds, uh, being in there. Uh, you know, I think it's cool. The silence says, I wonder if Detroit Become Human works in Vorpex. I don't know, but that would be awesome uh, if it did. Uh, I mean, uh, that's a that's one of those games that, like Death Stranding, is one of those games that I've uh, always had kind of an interest in. Uh, but really, you know, no time for flat games, right? Yeah. Well, now you can. You know, do them even on an immersive screen, like I said, it's uh, in the 3D. Um, I don't even know that I would want to play some this game or uh, Journey it, any other way. Like, I guess if you were in the full world and you could look around, 
you know, but it, again, it showed me that they could take any of these games, any of these flag ga- third person games and stick you in there and it would be amazing, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I actually um, tagged uh, Sony and PlayStation on Twitter today to pretty much, you know, plant the seed, the idea of an immersive, you know, 3D theater mode for PS5, allowing us to uh, play some of the flat Sony exclusives in VR, of course, on a screen, but in 3D. Uh, hopefully, if they had never considered it before, maybe... Uh, Maybe they'll uh, they'll they'll read my tweet and it uh, it'll give them an an idea that will one day turn into something. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got the uh, you got to plant the seed, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I got to do what I can, and you know, at this point in time, what what can you do other than uh, just put it out into the world and see what happens? That's true. So I guess we anyway, we've, yeah. I was gonna yeah, say we've uh, talked about we've talked about games that work, right? So let's talk about a little bit of um jank four packs. Yeah, I've said it many times, Roots, um that the first thing that I would do when I when I whenever I got Vorpex is go into Resident Evil Seven and give it a look because it's my favorite game. And uh you know, as great as it is on PlayStation, there's a lot of aliasing. Now, now the um, the resolution and detail, all very beautiful on PlayStation, but it's very shimmery. So I, I always have wondered, what would the game look like uh, in PC VR? What would it look like if all that shimmer were to just disappear? And, and you could really appreciate the detail for what it is. Uh, so it wasn't the first thing i tried in vorpex it was the second but i did give it a shot roots and i and i gave it a real go i mean i i watched uh, you know an hour's worth of tutorials last night i took you know a page and a half of notes yeah. here on how to do the settings and um i tried it roots i tried it first with the uh the default vorpex profile then I tried the Stereo 3D Productions tutorial method, which tweaks that profile to make it even better. And then I tried the uh, the revision update to that tutorial, which supposedly helps the field of view. And I got to say, Roots, um, nothing that I tried, whether it be in full 3D or on an immersive screen, uh, nothing that I tried would I ever consider anywhere near playable it was a blurry mess uh the shimmer was 10 times worse on pc than it is is on playstation and it's funny because i knew it would be when i started watching that tutorial because one of the things the guy keeps joking about is just how ineffective the anti-aliasing is in this game he says that the anti-aliasing actually makes it worse and you can't turn it off so it's like always forced on. You have to pick one of the AA methods and none of them work and it makes it worse in many cases. Uh, but Roots, I mean, literally, and this is no joke, literally playing this thing in Vorpex was like playing Resident Evil 7 with a Labo VR. It's exactly like that. Just all blurry and cloudy. Uh, the movement feels all weird when you move your head. And, uh, you know, there, there was no setup that I tried that I didn't nope out of within five or ten minutes. And that's the full VR mode, right, that you said felt weird when you moved your head? Cause that, both, I, that's, both modes. Yeah, see, I couldn't, I couldn't get Resident Evil 7 to play on my thing. I, I couldn't get it to work in Helix Vision, and I couldn't get it to work on Vorpex, and I think maybe because I was doing both. I was fucking myself one way or the other. Um, but like when I got Sea of Thieves running and I was in full VR mode, it just felt really weird. Remember that I told you that one time I was, when I first got the CV1 from you, I thought, wow, this is like, I forgot the CV1 is all weird. It was like, it felt weird when I moved, but one of the, the sensors weren't all working. That's how I felt when I was moving around Sea of Thieves. It just felt all bizarre. Like there was a sensor not working or something. And I, I don't know, man. I, I mean, obviously, I mean, this, what Drillo's video here from when he used it, it looks pretty good, but I don't know 
how long ago this, I think it was a 2019. Is it possible that it got worse or is there something we're missing? Because uh, clearly journey worked amazing, was really good. You know, my friend Pedro, amazing. Um, but they're also not as ta taxing a games as Sea of Thieves or Resident Evil 7. And so when people tell me, hey man, this thing works amazing, you can play it in VR, um, some of these newer games, I, I think uh, their expectations or, or things that they're willing to overlook are not things that I'm willing to overlook ever. Like it just, it's not happening, bro. Like I just, I'd rather play it flat sometimes at that point, you know? Yeah, I, I'm thinking that there may, doesn't Drillo play on immersive screen? Like you don't play it in full 3D, right? Or full um, VR, I'm I mean. not sure how if I could see if I could get it in an immersive mode um, then it would be good and Scion I did try Sea of Thieves mode um, with Cinema 3D and it was um, way better there's no way I could do full VR if I was going to do it it would be Cinema mode 3D um, I was able to get the frames up and make it uh, um, really good but full 3D or full VR absolutely not and uh but it's just maybe there's just something that there's, I mean, uh, there's people out there that swear by it that I, you know, value their opinion, like um, Alex or uh, Jarillo. So I, I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Yeah, I think he's he's probably playing it in the, the, the cinema screen mode, which I did try. But when I tried it, I wasn't trying a profile that was specifically set up for the cinema screen. Hmm. So I, I would just kind of zapped out of my full VR into the cinema screen, which did make it uh, a lot more resolution. It was a lot more clear. Mm -hmm. Like what I ended up doing was uh, after it was so blurry, I just kept upping the, the, the render resolution. I kept upping the super sampling in game uh, until I had them both maxed out. And when I got it to that point, it still was too blurry mm. in, in full VR. But when I clicked it out and brought it into a, an immersive screen, uh, it was it was crisp. It, it was actually pretty good looking on the screen. Mm. But uh, I think it was kind of distorted because of where it had been set up for full VR uh, because the movement just felt so awkward and weird. When I moved my head, the whole thing would move. And even though it actually started to look okay, it, it started to make me nauseous. Mm. Playing, playing it on the screen even started to uh, make me nauseous. And, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, there's probably a, a way that you could set it up on that screen to make it playable. Uh, but, but, again, I didn't have it set up correctly for that. And in addition to that, another thing that really bothered me was I wanted to play with my gamepad. Mm. And a lot of, um, most of the functions in game, you map to a gamepad, but there are certain ones that you have to uh, use the, the keyboard for or the mouse. Mm. And uh, so it was kind of this weird thing where I was playing with my gamepad, but I had to keep my mouse and keyboard in my lap because if I needed to say crouch, I couldn't crouch with my controller. I had to, uh, I had to use the uh, the keyboard for that. Where if I needed to like go back in a menu, I had to right click. There was no button on my controller that would do that. Um, but you know, you know, as many people as as have sworn by this game in Vorpex, I'm sure there's a good way to do it. But uh, I followed Stereo 3D Productions tutorial to get it in full vr i followed it to the letter roots again i took very detailed notes and i double checked them and what that guy said produces one of the best vorpix vorpix experiences he's ever tried uh produce blurry garbage for mm. me might well, makes you wonder if it's changed since uh steven sales says that he's going to try tomorrow um and see if he can get it working he's he tried it a while ago and it uh worked fairly well and if he gets it working, he will let you know, and then we can try it. Yeah, I, well, I'm I'm certainly not done. Uh, I have not tried any um, any of the cloud profiles for it, mm. so there may be some uh, some other setups that I haven't tried that that might work. So I'm still going to try that. And yes, Stephen, if if you have time and and you want to give it a shot, 
uh, let me know how it goes. Because again, this is my favorite game. And, you know, again, the only reason I'm this interested in it is because Dorillo swears that it's better than the PlayStation 4 version. And I, you know, again, the PS4 version is my favorite VR game, period. So if I can get a better version of my favorite game, then obviously I want to do that, right? Yeah. Well, it looks pretty good on here. So now D-Rail says check out Resident Evil 3 me- remake. Now, are D-Rail, are you saying that we should try that that um file? Because sometimes yeah, you that... can use different ones even though it's not for Resident Evil 7, it's the same engine and it can actually be used for it. Yeah, a lot of people say that those remakes work pretty well. I think um uh re2 was supposed to supposedly really good in it as well if i remember correctly so somebody just needs to figure out the best one and then let us know and then we don't have to mess around and waste time doing it i don't i don't have uh, time you know, I, you know i want to find out i want to play it wes i want to play through this i was all excited that's why i spent so much time trying to get the damn thing going i want to i want to play i want jack to chase me again and i can't i can't i don't have a playstation i need to make a video because main fans waiting well all in all i spent over three hours on this game last night uh for nothing so uh i'll give it another good uh uh go or two i'll give it the old college try roots um but uh again highly disappointed in uh the results it wasn't i mean again it goes back to what i was saying at at the top of the show it really is all about your expectations and I had high expectations for this one, and it did not uh, come anywhere near it. See, my high expectations, anybody that says uh, full VR Vorpex, I say shenanigans, because I haven't seen a good one yet. But I didn't see a good flat one either until Journey, and now all of a sudden my eyes are open. There's so many games out there. And for all those people, and we'll probably do a similar version um, of this episode more geared towards helix vision in the near future um but that is a viable um uh product you know five dollars versus 40 and uh i know a lot of people have been messing around with that in the discord this last week so yeah definitely we'll give it a look at some point um i want to get a little more experience in vorpex first so i kind of have a a good base to compare it against Mm -hmm. But uh, that that's definitely on the docket. Uh, it, it's you know, Vorpex, Helix Vision. These are all tools in our arsenal. The mods, right? Uh, all of this stuff is just different tools that we have uh, that enable us to experience things in VR that uh, other people don't get to experience. You know, people who just uh, take the canned gaming experience as it is offered up on the store shelves are uh, in many cases missing out on a lot of the best stuff that video gaming has to offer. Yeah, especially in VR, there's so many different things that, um, you know, if you've never played 3D gaming on a flat screen, like even with the the glasses or whatever, man, it's in the the VR, it's just next level. Yeah, D-Rail said, I just use Vorpex as the world's best 3D TV. I was wondering that myself earlier today, uh, how this driver would actually work with like video files and if it could convert like movies and television shows the same way that it converts video games. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll have to try that, huh? Uh, maybe that's what he's talking about when he says he uses it as the world's best 3d TV. Maybe he has some experience, um, in this, uh, in, in trying that. Yeah. Mike Spear says the, uh, it's not Vorpex, but here the, uh, isolation, Alien Isolation VR mod is fantastic, and I would say it's probably the number one best mod out there, considering it's just one file, and it is really good. Although, Drillo and a few other people will be the first one to tell you it's not to scale, bro, and uh, and then it's just garbage at that point. I think it's good. I like it. Yeah, the, the Alien Isolation uh, VR mod is really good. We did an episode not that long ago on it, one of our Monday shows. We talked about it uh yeah uh, there there's a few flaws with it but uh for the most part it, it it's almost like a native vr game it really is and the re and there's a good with good reason 
uh, it was developed with the VR mode in mind uh, for Oculus DK2, I think. And um, they disabled that. And basically all the mod does is uh, re-enable it and make it compatible with newer headsets. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's a really good one. Yeah, it makes me think, dude, why has somebody not made a dying light mod? Because it's got the same thing. I've even been, you know, changed it, and I've uh, gone in in VR. And dying it's, Light's supposed to, if I'm, unless I'm mistaken, uh, Dying Light's supposed to be another good one to play in Vorpex. I wouldn't doubt it, because um, I've played it just with changing that line to um, to turn it on, and it's actually legit really good for what for something that was never finished. It's really good, so... Yeah, I, I don't remember. Maybe it was even PD that tried Dying Light, mm. but uh, that was one of the ones I, I looked into, I think. Is that one of the those, uh, one of those games that's kind of like parkour, but it's like a zombie shooter? It's an open-world zombie game. Um, it, you, you would love it, dude, because you're crafting all sorts of cool weapons, and uh, the, it just gets crazy, dude. It's one of the best zombie games I've played, and it's multiplayer um like three four people that's cool yeah my main fan says there's a dying light vr mod maybe that's what i'm thinking about yeah yeah well yeah it just in general it worked pretty good so yeah it was cool anyway uh again vorpex very much uh you know a tale of two games so to speak uh it, it really depends on what you're playing obviously and it depends on your expectations uh but overall uh, I would say worth the price of admission when you say roots. Oh yeah, just for journey alone, I would buy Vorpex forty bucks out all day I, long. Honestly, I I was as impressed in a different way, but I was as impressed with my friend Pedro. I thought that the uh, again, it seemed like a, a, it was native three D, like it was intended to be played that way, and uh, I had very much a similar feeling like I had when I played Journey that I felt sorry for people who played this game uh without having you know that awesome 3d depth that i was uh, able to experience yeah yeah that's what i was thinking with my friend pedro as well because i've spent like six or eight hours playing it and i feel like i wasted it i could have been playing it in vorpex bro yeah i i uh you know playing that pedro really got me excited for uh we were talking yesterday about playing bloody zombies for the first time and uh, I'm really looking forward to that now because, uh, you know, Pedro showed me just how cool these side-scroller games can look uh, with, with legit 3D. But the only difference is uh, that Bloody Zombies is actually built by a, a top-notch developer, built for VR, and, uh, you know, it's full VR. It's not on a, on a screen. Yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to be great. Money I, Show I 5. Wait. It's yeah, my, exactly, exactly. Coming up, coming to a uh, a Patreon near you soon. Yeah, you know what's coming uh, to the the audience very soon is some um, amazing, amazing uh, best of the uh, Viveport Infinity, right? Yeah, man, we talk about Viveport a lot, and, and it's not that we plan on covering it weekly the way that we do. It's just there's so many awesome games that continuously come into to Viport Infinity that uh, I feel you know I feel a responsibility to our viewers to make sure that they know all the awesome things that they can get because even at full price routes twelve bucks a month for all that you have access to it really is a bargain. Yeah. Yeah, well, and if you really want to be, I mean, 20 some dollars, whoever didn't get that, was it $27 or something? What I'm yeah, one of those $27 people. for a year. Nor normally, it's $107 for a year of Vorpex, but like three or four months ago, they, they had a sale going on, uh, $27 for a full year of it. Oh, crazy. Um, yeah, you just said Vorpex. You got Vorpex on the brain. Vorpex um. on the brain, yeah. <laughs> Five board, yeah, no, no, it's 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 amazing, and I guess I'm <clears throat> the one of the first ones I picked. I wanted to go with something that's a little bit educational, as not only um, a good experience, but it looks like it would be uh, something you could learn with. And um, it's called Dinosaurs in Real Size. And if you haven't seen 
um, some of these things, like who doesn't want to see your your size of what you would look like next to little Velociraptor, right? Or um, and it gives you some information there. Look at that guy fly. I uh, I think it's yeah, good. yeah, man. I mean, we we were talking about it recently uh, about how there's not enough quality dinosaur titles in VR. Well, uh, you know, color me wrong because obviously uh, the greatest dinosaur title of all time was waiting for us on Viport this entire time. It's free and it's educational. So that's the best thing is like you can find out like all sorts of information on that little tiny card that was very basic. Um, but uh, no, I, I guess it looks like it might be pretty cool to be standing next to one of those dinosaurs, right? Yeah, man, uh, scale. We talk about it all the time, the, the, how scale is one of the most effective tools for a developer to use in VR. And uh, especially when you're talking about production values such as this. I mean, look at that, man. It, is that a video game dinosaur? Is that a real picture of a real-life dinosaur? I don't know, but it's uh, 3.2 feet long. So as a thing, I would I, I would be afraid that I would, like, lose myself in there. Um, and you don't have to worry yeah. about full locomotion because it looks like you got a couple of nodes to teleport to and keep you right in, pl in line. Yeah, I've always said it, you know, that VR really isn't to the point yet where it could uh, actually fool me into thinking that uh, I was really in there. But uh, I think, I, again, Roots, I might have been wrong about that because, I mean, just look at look at that, man. I mean, uh, it's like it's, uh, you know, the year 50,000 B.C. all over again. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely uh it's definitely a winner there. And I think you can even buy it for like a dollar, I think, if you want to own this thing after you've played it on Infinity. That's the beauty, is like you can buy some of these gems uh for a pretty decent price. So Well, uh, you know, educational stuff's great roots. Uh and you know, bargain basement games or experiences are are, are all awesome, but you know, I want to have some fun. I'm not trying to learn stuff. I want to go to a carefree world and I don't want to pay a dollar for it roots. I want it for free. And that's why I submit to you a C world. Uh, a C world is a, uh, it looks like a colorful wonderland roots, uh, that you could get lost in for days at a time. Let me just read this, uh, this description to you AC world is an imaginary micro cyber city conceiving by Angus Chang in collaboration with artist Naxus group. Uh, we welcome the user dives into a labyrinth like cyberspace, exploring the novelties in the city and collecting likes and followers along the journey. Eventually the users lead their own city followers and find their way to the outlet towards the real world. So, Roots, we could go in here and uh, in this colorful wonderland and collect likes and followers. And God knows we're not getting any of those on YouTube. So we, <laughs> this is what we need. It's giving us what we need, the likes and subscribers. Is, is this like a platformer or what the hell is this thing? Because as it was going up that Dude. thing, I, was, I could imagine trying to jump up all those different levels. And it did look kind of crazy there. It's Angus Chang world, man. Oh, well, of course. Then never mind. I should know what that is, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I, honestly, I do think, you know, all seriousness, I got to go into this thing, man. I mean, it, it's free. You don't have to have infinity. This is actually a free-to-own title. And look at those things dancing, bro. Yeah. Who doesn't want to join that party? I just want to know what the hell's going on in there. I mean, it looks like a little platformer, right? Like you're like a crazy platformer and uh <laughs> recycled doesn't feel very well <laughs> yeah i don't it's like it's lego land it is lego land it's angus chang land world sorry and uh i like angus it Chang's world it's the yeah i do too it's the dancing people that solidify it i think but um it, it's stuff like this you know when when the sony when the sony fanboys speak up and start talking about uh how awesome their uh exclusives are you know, point them in this direction. Say, hey, bro. You don't have Angus I've Chang. Got a, I've got a Vive, and uh, you don't have Angus Chang 2020. Yeah. Well, and then they go and they sell their uh, their PC, P, or PlayStation and get the uh, Vive. 
So that's what I would do, you know. But you know, if if the tracking uh wasn't excuse enough, you know. Yeah. Well, see, my next game I picked is um it's kind of a sci-fi and uh there's been a lot of interest in Mars over the last like i don't know probably a few years yeah, right elon musk elon right? musk yeah dude so if you're getting like a little elon musk vibe and you want to go to mars no better way to go to mars in the near future and uh deal with what we don't even know is on mars apparently mars is um teeming with sharks and uh that's what you get to find at mars in this game and i it looks very interesting actually the shooter i actually I, I don't remember who it was but i think somebody actually played this game on uh on youtube recently i don't really? remember exactly who it was but this actually i think is supposedly a decent little experience here wow well i'll tell you what i've never thought you know if we were going to go to mars the one thing we'd be worried about is flying sharks but apparently i mean this actually has got puzzle elements to it um you know it's very bizarre but you get a you get to go to Mars. Who doesn't want to go to Mars? It's 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 red matter mix Sharknado, bro. Mm. Yeah, it's Sharknado for sure. Uh, Phil Yarn Tower Two. What did you think when you were going up on that zip line? Or was it you were floating or something? What it was a balloon or something? I can't remember, man. That was cool. One of the coolest parts of uh, Tower Two. No, there's a lot of like uh, zip lines and stuff that you hold on to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is... there was a lot of things that that I liked about the Tower Two. I, I'm glad it was on. Uh, infinity um uh, the, uh it was lacking in other ways as well i will just say that no this is the this is the prologue wes so apparently you've got Good. another one coming right that that's great that means that uh that uh, they're just going to whet your appetite for some martian sharks and uh then we're going to get the full you know the full story just in time for elon to uh land on the surface a vr spry sa guy says he's been on uh, mars virtually of course so let me ask you this spry was there sharks on in your version of mars because i this is a first for me i didn't think that sharks could exist on on mars but uh it's pretty cool yeah yeah honestly um <laughs> the guy's blasting the shit out of a shark with a laser gun. Yeah. Uh, that, that's pretty awesome, man. Uh, I don't know which one I'm going to try first, this one or the uh, Angus Chain World. Yeah. Well, you know, choices are good. You know, uh, we, we've talked about it a few times uh, on our program about how VR is kind of taking taken off in uh, China and Asia. And, uh, you know, I've often wondered to myself, how do these people find time? They're, they're all, you know, forced pretty much to work uh, long hours and, and they don't get to choose their job. And uh, you, you figure that they're either training or, or working so much that they really don't have the time or energy to play. But uh, I'm starting to see how that's possible, because what if you could play VR and train for your job at the same time? Or it's Oh, well, then that would be good, right? I mean... Depending think, on what your I job it, is. It's the perfect solution. Uh, and I saw an example of this on the Viport just today in the title uh, Spray Paint Trainer. That's right, folks. If you didn't already know how to use spray paint, uh, this game, this, this highly detailed simulation is the perfect title for you. Let me uh, let me read off some of this description for you, Roots. Quote, You don't need to waste expensive paint. You don't need dirty clothes. You can learn painting technology. The right hand is the kettle. The left hand is the color selection menu. menu. Use the ray to press the disc to select the color. Press the trigger with your right hand to paint the car. Roots, uh, have you ever seen a more realistic simulation in your entire life? Man, it looks like a real car. I'm trying to figure out what changing your clothes has to do with any of that. But <laughs> that whole thing is bizarre. But, like, whoever's painting this car is not doing a very good job. Like, you know, you don't just keep spinning it around that way. I just do the whole thing. or I don't know. Something weird going on in this game, bro. Um but, uh, the great thing about it is is that they do 
they do sell this as a training program. Oh. So this is how you, this is how you do it, Roots. Well, okay. So like you know, at Ford, they probably got this going on right um, as a trainer. Maybe not Ford. Yep. Maybe a Chinese car or something. Right. This is like um, well, I don't know. Well, of course, we don't know what the Chinese cars are called, but um, <laughs> yeah, I got to imagine this is how they do it over there, right? Yeah. Oh, well, looks good. Looks like it'd be a, a real gem to have um, for free in Viveport Infinity. And apparently, never mind. I was gonna, I was gonna say something very insensitive, roots, but I, I've got the, my filter turned on today. The filter is on, and um, and main fan says we don't want to get paint on your clothes. That's a good point. I didn't even think exactly. about that, especially when it's green like that. They're doing a phenomenal job on this car. Yeah, I, I see, I see green cars like this all the time, roots. And, yeah. Uh, I think we all know who likes green cars like this. <laughs> my mom. Yeah, who doesn't though, right? Okay, so uh, I know, right? Anyway, this is this is a great. I mean, if you guys want to uh, want to learn a trade, something that you can use in your real life to uh, make a living, this is the title for you. Only two bucks on Viveport. Yeah, pick up this game and play it for like a week, and then I guarantee you could go into any automobile place and they'll just hire you on the spot to do Absolutely. some spray. Paint. I know I would. Then you get fired in about two seconds. Um, okay, so I guess I'm gonna go back to 19. Um, probably 1994 maybe 1996 for my next pick which uh i i just thought i like i saw it and i thought oh my god this is top gun like on the super nintendo from 1994 or something um but i you know i i wonder i, I how um how realistic this is because i think this is the military trainer uh video or game that they use for the chinese military but i'm not sure uh, i could be wrong on that well, I don't know, man. Uh, those those jets don't look very green to me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They do. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. United States Air, Air Force uh, jets, but um, yeah. So this one's called Air Brigade VR, and uh, you can check it out for um, for free on Viveport Infinity. Well, you know, I was going to pre-order the um, the Microsoft fi Flight Simulator. Yeah. But now, since this is on Viport Infinity, I mean, think about who how, needs that old piece yeah, of garbage? Yeah, dude, think about how good this is going to look on your reverb, dude. You crank that super sample up. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, I imagine this thing's going to be gorgeous on that new hardware. But uh, it may be a Vive exclusive, though. Uh, so I might have to pick up a Vive just to play yeah, this. Yeah, dude, you can get one of those cheaper um, Vive uh, Cosmos that aren't for sale for the consumers yeah oh yeah uh, yeah they uh they they went back enterprise didn't they yeah. yeah i don't know what the hell they're doing i do i know they're going to uh they're they're they're, they're saying that we didn't want you to buy our headset anyway that's what they're doing yeah we didn't want you to get it anyway mm. we're for enterprise now yeah anyway good pick roots um if you want to play something though a little more grounded, a little more game like, uh, I submit to you Neon Sprint. Now this game just looks like a load of fun to me, Roots. And uh, unlike a lot of these titles on uh, Viveport, what a trailer, man! They actually did a good job with this trailer. Yeah, you know what? The first thing I thought when I saw this trailer, I thought, "What the hell am I putting on my face, <laughs> dude?" Because I need to have that box or whatever that thing that guy's got on his face. Um, but uh, this looks like a legit gem. Like you could just like spend hours riding this horse <laughs> through this labyrinth, um, and you get multiple horses. So like, who doesn't love multiple horses, Wes? Well, in case you were wondering, Roots, Neon Sprint has a perfect combination of VR and rideable animals, mm. allowing you to experience an unprecedented sense of speed in VR without dizziness. Uh, Neon Sprint has both endless mode and campaign mode. You will encounter various challenges while riding, dodging obstacles, sprint over walls, and also face up the increasing speed. Players use the characteristics of the mount to quickly avoid obstacles, pass levels, and unlock achievements. You know, Roots, uh, I think I have to play all of these games 
uh, on the list today because here's another one that just looks like a ton of fun. Well, they said animals, and then at the end of this trailer, it shows a dragon. So do I get to fly a dragon? I might actually be interested in flying a dragon through this thing. Um, it's it's definitely different, uh, you know. And I, I my favorite part of this video is is the way that that um, kid's badass. He's cracking his knuckles and. Like you can actually hear it in the video like he's getting ready you know he's gotta get get down with this you know um <laughs> he's gonna beat his uh his high score right yeah yeah he did it <laughs> anyway uh this uh this title what you know honestly what it really reminds me of is uh that that unicorn joust in uh summer Funland. Yeah. You know the one you can find hidden in the manhole? It's funny, Mame fan just said that and I was thinking the exact same thing. Is it's um it, it you know, if it was a rainbow and it was a unicorn, it'd be the same thing, right? Yeah, very similar. And you know, that honestly was one of my one of my favorite things in Summer Funland. But so if this plays anything like that. I mean, this could be a, a real hidden gem. Yeah, but you know what? What's funny about that, and this is how ridiculous that statement is, Wes. Um, the Chinese never copy any games, dude. <laughs> you know, and we'll, of course not. Yeah. So, um, but my next pick, um, actually, I guess my last pick is uh, of the ones that I picked, and this was right up your alley, Wes. Uh, I really picked this because of you when I saw it. Um, and it's called Horror Adventure VR. And uh, it this one actually looks like um, it's confusing because I look like it could be kind of weird and creepy, but at the same time, it's got some weird stuff going on in here. Yeah, I'm actually kind of familiar with horror adventure VR. If I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Paolo actually played this on his channel uh, because it's VR and it's a game. Mm. And uh, yeah, it actually... Uh, I think that the most jank thing about this game is actually the the thumbnail, uh, because the game actually looks a lot better than the uh, than the promo material that they put out for it. It's got some creepy stuff going on, things crawling on the walls, things just popping out of the nowhere. Um, you know, everybody loves creepy dolls with heads spinning around backwards. Uh, so yeah. it's like they took all of the uh, the cliche horror game stuff and just jam-packed it all into one title well or into one trailer let's just get all yeah. the all the stuff yeah. you know yeah you know when i look at a quality trailer like this it's one of those situations where you really just hope that they didn't put all the good stuff in the trailer right and, and ruin the game yeah you know this actually does look like you could you actually could enjoy this game it's got some weird stuff going on uh we might have to check this out yeah actually this is the type of stuff that i actually it doesn't have to be great for me to enjoy just being in there and checking it out. For example, another Viport title that we didn't put in the show today, uh, it was a game that just came out called um, Escape Room VR Inner Voices. Mm. It was just added to Viport, and I actually played it for uh, a couple of hours the other night, uh, despite tremendous jank, just tons of jank in that game. Uh, I mean, it was broken in many ways, but I still enjoyed it. Mm. I, I worked my way around the jank, and uh, I found a hidden Dracula shrine in it. Ooh, I mean, who doesn't love finding hidden stuff, right? I mean, it was like, uh, it was literally, it was a wall that uh, you can walk through. And there, it, once you got inside the wall, there was like, uh, like so, some steps up to like this altar thing. And... Um, there was a bowl on the steps and candles around, and then there was a a, a painting on the wall of uh, the the real life Dracula, like from uh, Romania, hmm. uh, all those uh, you know hundreds of years ago. It was the weirdest thing. That is weird. That's kind of creepy, actually. I don't know if I want to yeah, stumble onto that. But mm. you're literally you're walking down this hall, and uh, I noticed just a little flicker of light in like the crack where the walls meet. And uh, I went and peeked through it, and I could see a candle. And uh, then I ended up just kind of sticking my whole head through the wall. And then I realized you could just walk right through the wall. Hmm. And sure enough, there was a shrine to Dracula, like the real Dracula. That's weird. That's so weird. Yeah. Anyway, it looks like the type of thing you'd find in horror adventure. By the way, uh, 
how creative of a name, right? I mean, they must have it must have taken them months to come up with that name. Yeah, dude, horror adventure VR, dude. Like that's uh, that's that's really really uh. I know I couldn't come up with something like that. No, no, not at all. Anyway, uh, the hits just keep rolling, Roots. Uh, I found another one that I thought you might like, um, just because of the general premise here. Uh, and I'm talking, of course, about Cowmaster. And uh, I know that it's always been one of your lifelong dreams to be a rancher oh, yeah. on a cattle ranch and uh, to rope uh, to rope cattle with your lasso and then, uh, and then you have your big hammer there in, in the other hand, <laughs> what do you, what do you think you get, you're going to do with that hammer roots? Oh, I hope I'm going to smash that, um, that cattle's brains in, but I, it sounds very visceral though for a, a cartoony game like this. <laughs> Like, uh, you know, you know, what's the best after you rope the, the, the cow around the neck, it gets these big puppy dog cartoon eyes and yeah. they, it starts crying. So <laughs> what is the hammer for so far? They're just loop. <laughs> Are you just holding the hammer. Oh, you got to hit the You got to hit the red button. Oh, come on. I thought you got to actually bash the cow's brains in. No, it's for the red button, man. Why can't I just use my hand, bro? <laughs> you got to have a hammer. That's that's a that's a big button, bro. My favorite part is the um the people in the background. That guy's like cheering. You know that chick's just like licking her tongue out, and it's very bizarre. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's go watch him beat the cam the the cattle to death. Oh my God! Ray Delator wants to know what your favorite horror movie is. It's a uh, Cowmaster VR. Cowmaster. No, uh, my favorite <laughs> my uh my favorite horror movie. That's a good question. I. There's so many different kinds of horror movie. And uh, I mean, th there's there's actual supernatural horror that probably that's the kind that scares me the most. Mm. Uh, there's slasher films, which I enjoy, uh, just the gore of those. And then um, and then there's like comedic horror, right? Like Army of Darkness is a great example of a hilarious horror movie. Uh, I would I would have to pick a few. Um, I like The Exorcist, the original Exorcist, a lot. And to be honest, I like The Exorcist three a lot. Mm. A lot of people uh, underestimate uh, or underrate The Exorcist three. Uh, I thought it was a great movie. Uh, it wasn't the scariest movie in the world, but it was just a good movie. Um, but the first Exorcist it, it scares me to death, even to this day. Um, I like Friday the 13th, the final chapter a lot. I thought that was a really good uh, uh, slasher film, probably my favorite slasher film. And then um, Evil Dead 2. I've always loved Evil Dead 2. Um, I thought that that was uh, another good example of um, scary and funny at the same time. It's, it's a scary movie, but there's funny parts in it. Mm. See, I always liked, um, or I guess I have a lot of the movies I liked. And what is this totally off subject and we'll get back on? But um, Scream, just because it was like, you didn't know what the hell was going on. And then the twist at the end, and it was like, it really kind of fucked you up thinking about it. You know what I mean? That type of movie or Seven, you know, where he opens the box at the end and you're like, oh my God, like it just takes a turn that you're just not. Or was it seven? Was that the name of with Brad Pitt or whatever? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, I got, I've got another one for you. A movie that you should all check out if you haven't. Uh, a, a really underrated horror movie that would make an absolutely great VR game if they were to ever do it. Uh, as above, so below. I love that movie. And if they were to make a game, I mean, it wouldn't even have to be like an adaptation. If they could just make a game built on the same premise that that movie's built on it would be uh, one of my favorite vr games i've ever played yeah that'd be cool but uh the idea there is it's a found footage movie right uh, a bunch of uh there are catacombs underneath the city of paris and uh there are certain portions of them that are closed to the public and uh this group of young people uh, go down to explore those catacombs with their video camera. They go into the sealed off areas that they're not supposed to. 
and get lost Uh-oh. and all sorts of mind bending uh, stuff takes place down there. Mm, sounds spooky. You know, yeah. um, you know what else is spooky is what I was talking about earlier about how um, the Chinese developers never copy anything when it comes to games, right? Uh, they wouldn't. And, and honestly, there's um, no way. There's no way. And, and you know, um, it's interesting that you say that because uh, a lot of people assume that um, that we always have the best of everything, right? Over here in uh, VR games, no different. We just assume that we have the best version of every genre, but apparently people aren't paying attention to what's available on Viport because in many cases there are games on there that are just as good, if not better. For example, one of my favorite games to play is uh, Headmaster, right? Mm -hmm. And people assume, uh, you, you know, they'll ask you, uh, okay, you want me to buy Viport Infinity? Well, can I play Headmaster on there? And of course, the answer is no. You can't play Headmaster on Viport Infinity. But who would want to play Headmaster when you can play Great Header? Now, yeah. of course, this is uh, another... Viveport, a uh, great title on Viveport. And when I say great title, I'm literally talking about the title. It's called Great Header. <laughs> I mean, how awesome is that, Ruth? Yeah, well, see, what I liked about it is it's just completely different from, like, if you already own Headmaster, this is a completely different mechanic, different, you know, like you're, well, I guess you're aiming at different uh, type of um, targets, right? So maybe it's a little similar, but uh, it's totally different. You got a balloon there, so you can hit balloons. Yeah, uh, that's true. There's a tire. Well, uh, wait a minute. There's tire tires and headmaster. Uh, uh, there's balloons too. Actually, now oh, that I think about oh, it. Shit. Um. Anyway, uh, you know who else is a great header? <laughs> <laughs> My mom. Well, all I gotta say is, uh, you know, that's your mom. How dare you? It's just crazy. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, so next time someone says that uh, that, that 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 they're going to uh, go spend their money on Headmaster instead of picking up Viport, be sure you stop them and let them know about uh, this awesome, awesome title, Great Header. <laughs> um, VR yeah. Spry Guy says if we're trying to if Virtual Strangers is trying to get sponsored by Viveport, we're going about the wrong way. Oh, Dude, maybe. we're just trying to highlight some of the best titles that, yeah. that they have to offer. Well, you know, what is another title that's um, amazing? And I see people all the time, you know, uh, they say that one of the best um, things in VR is height, right? And that feeling you get in the pit of your stomach. And uh, and people bitch all the time because Richie's Plank Experience is never on sale. Rarely is it on sale, right? I mean, you can get it on sale every once in a while, but it's kind of expensive, right? But um, yeah. there are other versions out there, right? Even better ones that you can play for free. Um, kind of like uh, another Plank VR. Oh, so you're saying that this isn't Richie's Plank. This is another Plank. Yeah, this is another Plank. This is the better Plank. And then instead, of, oh, wait, I guess you go in the elevator just like the other one. It even has feet as well. I wonder if you type in 666 if anything happens in this one or not. But uh, you get to go to the top of the city. And you get to walk against across another plank. Now, I I guarantee you, Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis is kicking himself now because if he would have done that London video with this one, he would have had like twenty million people watch this thing instead of the one point five or whatever million watched it. Well, there's always time, Roots. You know, we could do that. Yeah. Oh shit, that's true. We could do. Well, no one wants to put on anybody else's head. Can you imagine trying to get people to put on your head uh, headset out in public now. <laughs> right. well especially because like if uh if if mike took took to the streets of london to show them richie's plank then we would have to take to the streets of wuhan to mm. show them another plank right i don't want to go to this well i do virtually want to go to the streets of wuhan but uh, i bet you that their quarantine's a little bit more strenuous than ours so. possibly possibly, possibly. Anyway, uh, another great example here of uh, why you don't need the, those mainstream VR games, man. Viport Infinity has everything you need. They have Richie's Plank. We have another Plank. Yeah, yeah, we got Which McDonald's. One, you got we don't the know. McDowell's and the McDonald's, right? 
<laughs> exactly. They have the Big Mac. We have, what was the the, the, the Big Mac? Big Mac. We got the Big the Mick. Big Mac. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got one more gem here from uh, Viport for you all. You know, we could have went on on and on and on all night with this stuff. Uh, so many great titles, but uh, you know. When was the last time you were trying to sell somebody? I mean, it happens all the time. You're trying to talk somebody into buying by Port Infinity, and they say to you, uh, oh, I know what, what title I want to play. Does it have that Walking Dead game on there? You know, because that's one of the best games in VR, right? The Walking Dead. And uh, unfortunately, The Walking Dead is not on uh, by Port Infinity. Mm -hmm. But never fear, you don't need The Walking Dead. Uh, if you have the hopping dead, right. And this is actually kind of a little bit more sketchy than the walking dead because these things are hopping at you and nothing scarier than, than a zombie that's hopping because they're, they're not, they're not right. supposed to hop. They're supposed to walk or slide or slither or run. Um, I don't know now that I was looking at this game and it made me think, would Scion be able to play this game? Is this, or <laughs> these zombies are just, they're still zombies, man. Like, look but at they're that. hopping. Yeah, and, I mean, that looks pretty, actually kind of looks pretty creepy, dude. Those things are weird looking. Actually, let me get the uh, the description up for this one, cause, because they had a very Eastern uh, ideal going on with it here from the uh, the Hopping Dead, because this isn't your typical zombie gamer. It's like you would think. Okay. Uh, the, it's uh, It's got a very Eastern take on it. But, uh, yeah, who needs uh, Saints and Sinners roots when you've got this? Yeah, who needs the Onslaught either, you know? Yeah, I know, right? Who, who needs that garbage? Yeah. Garbage anyway, um, let's see here. Ice Productions introduces you an action and horror VR game with Eastern style, bringing you into the Eastern haunted world. You will become a wizard exorcist from the east in the game mm. and fight against demons and zombies with your partner dummy literally his name's dummy d-u-m-b-y <laughs> dummy uh eastern ghosts and zombies aren't afraid of guns and fire roots the great wizards shall use their own magical spells and exorcism swords to fight demons for all of you who were only used to guns as weapons we offer you a brand new adventure in killing zombies with Eastern magic roots. So you see, it doesn't matter if they don't have fire and guns over their roots. They have magic, bro. Yeah, who needs Daryl's bow and there, or a crossbow? Who needs Rick's gun? You got some uh, Middle Eastern magic. I guess I didn't say it was Middle Eastern. Eastern magic. Um, yeah, that's, that's def definitely a different take on zombie killing. And... Uh, Sion says he can't take uh, hopping zombies seriously, so I guess he could jump in this game and he could just rock it, man. Awesome, awesome! I'm glad to hear. I'll buy it for him then. Yeah, and maybe if if he gets a uh, a Vive Focus roots for, because from what I can tell, this is a Vive Focus exclusive. Are you kidding me? So I can't even play this game. That's bull. A uh, main fan says he would uh, play a game or uh, wants to know if Sion would play a game with sexy zombies. I want to know that as well. Because uh, yeah, who, who doesn't love bro? sex? Yeah, who doesn't love sexy zombies? <laughs> yeah, I, I know I do. I mean, uh, people always just balk at the idea of necrophilia, but uh, I mean, <laughs> if we're talking about sexy zombies, yeah, well, if I it's mean, a zombie, it's not. It's just not the same, right? I mean, it's a zombie apocalypse. So right, because they're not. They're not really dead anymore, right? Yeah, yeah, they're undead. Well, they're still alive. So I don't know. That's, that takes a whole another level of creepiness to, to creepy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, in case you guys haven't caught on to what we're, we're doing here, uh, maybe you're a little slow. Uh, we're not being serious here. We're having a little bit of fun with the, uh, the bargain basement at Viport Infinity. In all seriousness, Viport Infinity really is the best deal in VR. So many great games, and I just I just clicked on games, uh, just to bring up uh, the the main page here. Creed, A Fisherman's Tale, Angry Birds, Isle of Pigs, Fruit Ninja, Gun Club, Westworld Awakening, 
to the top, touring cards, the Morgan, Crisis Brigade 1 and 2, Carly and the Rupert Man. I expect you to die. I could keep going, Roots. Like, literally, I could do this for an hour. Yeah, and uh, they just got good Goliath. I mean, they're actually getting good games. And you know what's funny? And this is why, I, you know, when I look at the games, I always look for ridiculous ones. But there's always a couple in there, like Space Cats with lasers or whatever, that you think are just ridiculous. But gameplay-wise, they're actually really good. And um, and there's a couple in here that I think could actually be good games. Even that shark one, the, it looked like the environments were really cool. And um, and you're shooting a gun, so I I might check that one out. Yeah, this this episode, this volume two of the Best of Iport was actually a little more difficult for me uh, than the first one because everything that I clicked on that I thought was going to be something you know that we could laugh at actually looked like a game that might be fun. And you know. It, not the best games in the world, uh, of course, but they didn't look like they weren't laughable. You know, they looked like something that you could go and go into for a few minutes and have a good time and, you know, and then uninstall it and go on to the next one. Roots, there's almost 1,500 titles oh, on Vipor and, and well over half of them are part of Infinity. So, uh, I mean, uh, if this is, if you could only pick one thing. Uh, to have with your brand new VR headset, if you're a noob and uh, and you need stuff to play, I mean, it, this is a no-brainer. It, literally, this is the one thing that you should buy is a year of Viveport, and then uh, and then you're set, bro. I mean, some of the best games. I'm looking at Arizona Sunshine right now and Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted. These are the like the best games in VR. Roots Rush, uh, both of the gallery games. I mean. It goes on and on and on. They actually have Richie's Plank, not just another plank. They have Richie's Plank as well. Oh, so they do so, have um, Richie's Plank. So you could have bust both uh, best of both worlds. But yeah, no, they plank. um, like you said, there's a lot of weirdness in there. Um, but there's probably a hundred amazing titles on there at le at least out of that 750 that you said are free, and uh, and there's they're constantly adding to them. So it's definitely worth picking up. And like you said, if you're a uh, Somebody new to VR, it's a no-brainer. So yeah, seven seven weeks running, they've added at least two quality titles to Liveport Infinity, and I, I can only imagine what we're going to be reporting on next week. Yeah, absolutely. Paper Beast, yeah, that Mini Motor Racing and Paper Beast are both amazing games, and uh, they're both just popped up there last week or two weeks ago. Here's a good example of what I was just saying. When I, I thought that I would be able to make fun of something, but it turned out it didn't look half bad. There's this game on here uh, that's called, literally the name of the game is Build Wall. That's the name of the game, Build Wall. And I said, okay, this is going to be a good one, right? Build Wall. How could Build Wall be any good? And I clicked on it, and it's literally, it's, it's, it's a Minecraft ripoff. It's, it's Minecraft. And it don't look half bad. Roots. It just if you've seen Discovery on uh, PlayStation VR, it pretty much looks like Discovery. Does it have Roots as Realm? I know that's it a does Minecraft. Not, that's it a Minecraft does not exclusive. Have roots as Realm. Yeah, uh, Roots as Realm is the place to uh, build your stuff. So it basically it looks like uh, Minecraft Pocket version is what it looks like, and uh, it don't. I mean, it don't look bad. The only funny thing about it is the title. It's called Build Wall. Yeah. I mean. I'll tell you what, that's most of these things, you know, but uh, definitely worth checking you out. You know, I should, I, I should have thought about what I was saying. Uh, YouTube might ban me for saying that, you know? Yeah, I, that's what I thought. I thought it was going to be like uh, a game where <laughs> you were like Donald Trump trying to build the wall or something, and there was like a bunch of angry people trying to stop you. That would be an interesting game. I could see the Chinese doing. Uh, Honeydew, Water the Dragonflower. That looks like a good one. Maybe that'll be on our next list. Yeah, well, on Onakazi, I don't know that I would pay one hundred and seven dollars for the year. I mean, people just paid twenty seven for the year, but I mean, there there's got to be discounts, or I don't know. I don't know how. What all right, the... all right. Think about it like this, dude. A hundred bucks. That that that's five twenty dollar games. And now compare that five games against the Viveport Infinity Library for a year. Yeah, and for real, I mean, if you wanted to play this Shark on Mars. Or shark, whatever. You ain't gonna pay money for it, dude. You're. This is a game that you are gonna try, want to try for free, and that's Viveport Infinity. 
And then you realize yeah. this is like the best game I've ever played. And what am I, I've been wasting my time on Walking Dead and Alex, Half-Life Alex was garbage compared to this, this gem of a shark of Mars. So Yeah, well, who wants Walking Dead when you can play Hopping Dead, bro? Yeah, dude. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, um, the Viport's good for a lot of things. Obviously, now it has a lot of the top games in VR. Uh, what I... The main thing that I've used it for, the, the stuff that I actually use Viport for, is uh, these paid experiences. You're like, nobody wants to pay for these things that aren't games because you know you're just going to use them once and throw away, right? You're not mm -hmm. going to do most of them again. But some of these things are $5, 10 even $20, and uh, nobody wants to buy that stuff. But most of them come to Viport. So, like, if you want to, to see gloomy eyes... Or the line, uh, or, or the uh, the Jerusalem one we were just talking about, the Holy Land. Mm -hmm. uh, Holy Land's twenty dollars roots, and uh, I mean it's a really high quality program. But why spend twenty dollars on it when you can just come into Infinity and uh, check it out for free? Well, and that's the thing, dude. Is like if I didn't have the Infinity to do it, I would have never tried it, and it would have been a shame because it was cool. So it just gives it's you those good. options of different things and. And you were saying this is this has been a while since you said this, and it may have just been between you and me, but like Viveport, for whatever reason, they seem to focus a lot on these experiences. They have experiences that I that don't exist on the other stores. Um, so that's, that's absolutely right. Yeah, so that's kind of cool as well. So there's going to be some things on there that you can't really see outside of Viveport Infinity or Viveport. Um, and uh, I mean, you're just talking about hours upon hours of of content. And, uh, it's yeah, there, there's it. a there, there's an app in there called Viport Video, and we talked about it on the Monday show not too long ago. And uh, there, there's hours of just 360 video content in there. Not all of it's 3D, but a lot of it is, and uh, some of it's really good. Yeah, cool. So definitely, definitely a thumbs up from both of us for Viport Infinity. Even the the weird, bizarre titles um, are worth checking out. Although, if I'm being honest, I I think I would. Of all the games that we talked about today, I think the spray painting, the car one, would be the absolute <laughs> last one I would try. <laughs> the funny thing is, man, is they they live they legitimately sell that as like a training program to teach you how to uh, to to use the latest in painting technology. And literally, you're holding a can of spray paint and just spraying like the windows. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if I'm, uh, just remind me not to use that company that buys that software. Cause uh, I, it looked yes, like man. shit. So. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I, no doubt. Th there's no doubt in my mind, even though we were kind of joking here that at least one of these titles is going to turn out to be fun. Last time we did this, we, we discovered space cats with lasers, which is a great game. And I'm sure at least one of these is going to be a great game. Uh, I'm definitely going to go check out the uh, Angus Chang world. Mm. That's free, and it looks like a trip. What about this and, one? Uh, this horror one with the people running into the wall and stuff. That's right up your alley. Yeah, horror adventure for yeah. sure. And uh, and the 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 horse one. What was it called? The uh, Sprint neon, neon whatever. Sprint. Yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, I'll probably try that as well because I like. Uh, runners in vr a, uh, i think that the, it's an underutilized um genre i'm a, I'm a little daunted though because i don't have that i mean that headset that kid was using that the focus or what was that man that thing yeah is, that was that was about focus man plus. they really blew it on the the design on that headset bro it looks like crap <laughs> well it says for enterprise anyway hmm, that's true yeah it doesn't really matter right for us consumers absolutely Anyway, what's your favorite title? Title on uh, I'm, I'm already talking like I'm from East Asia roots. <laughs> what's your favorite title? Tighter. Uh, let us know what your favorite Viveport title is in the comments below. And by favorite, I mean you know what I mean. Titles like we've highlighted here today. Uh, let us know in the comments down below, and be sure to join the conversation by clicking our Discord invitation link in the description below if you're new to the channel be sure to uh, subscribe and click the notification bell to keep up with all of our episodes here on the virtual strangers channel well with that said friends i would like to thank you once again for watching and for roots i'm 